Alrighty, so uh, a bend modifier. <laughs> if this was any other package but Maya, um, this would be so much more intuitive. Uh, but the question in front of us is how to bend text around the surface of a sphere. Uh, and there may be other ways to do it. Maybe you could tweak a wrap modifier to some um, way to do it, but um, this should work as well as any way. So I'm basically going to take a sphere, we'll just crank it up a little bit to like three, and we'll smooth it so you can see that. And let's create some text. So we'll go to the Create menu, we'll go down to the Text tool, and we will create the word, I got a word, Disco! Now, yes, you can create a trim surface and that'll do some good stuff. You can create polys, that'll do some good stuff. But take a look at bevel. Bevel's actually pretty cool. And if you look at that, you might say, hey, that's going to be kind of neat. Um, we can change all this after the fact. I'm just going to leave it as such. Um, the nice thing about bevel is you, start, you have a lot of options for the actual beveling of the text. And it'll create a nice polygon version of it on the way out. So let's just do this and say apply. All right. What I'm going to do initially, just so we work on this, is I'm going to take the sphere, I'm going to make a display layer of it, and hide it. And now I have my word disco, which probably doesn't look like what we want. So I'm going to hold down Control A, uh, but now I have all these options to mess with stuff. So I have the bevel options, I can actually change the font in here. Um, there's a lot of neat stuff we can do. First thing is the bevels are just way too big. Uh, Maya by default just creates this text tremendously slow. Uh, small, sorry. So what we're going to do is we're just going to decrease the size of these bevels to make this uh, more the size that you might want. So I'm going to do something like this, and let's do something like this, and potentially take this down to uh, 01, something like that, or 015, so it has a little bit of depth to it. So let's take a look at this for a second, see what we get. Okay. Uh, clearly you can change this. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to, you could take the extrude depth and you could make it a little bit thicker. Um, what's nice is you can go into the inner style or the outer style and you can actually uh, change the bevel. So let's say we were going to do something on the outer style and what we wanted to do was something sort of like a convex out. Um, that'll give us sort of a rounded feel over here. We do something like a convex in and then you get this sort of like eye beam effect, which you probably wouldn't want to use. Um, but you can screw with this. Um, also on the in, you could do this separately as well. So on the interior, you might want to do convex out, or um, maybe you want that uh, that cut in sort of a look, something like that. So however you want to do it, you can mess with it. Once you basically get it to what you want to look like, um, and you have your object, what you could do is you can just um, you know, you could leave history there. History is going to be kind of handy because you can change it after the fact. Uh, what I would do is probably center the pivot so that we can move this thing and do various things with it. Okay, so uh, we can scale this up. So let's scale it up, something like that. Let's bring back our sphere. All right, and let's just move it to the front so we can actually see what the heck we're doing. Something like that. Probably actually too big now compared to what you were looking at. So maybe something like that. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use W and I'm going to hold down X and just move it till it snaps to the grid, sort of right in front of this sphere. And I'm going to get rid of that just because it's annoying to look at. Okay. So we've got this. We've got that. The bend modifier. Once again, uh, <laughs> one of the great joys of working with Maya. So we're in the animation menu and you get it right here. If we go to the Create Deformers section, down here under Nonlinear, and you probably found it, you have the Bend modifier, okay? Well, the Bend modifier should just simply be able to be controlled from over here. So you should be able to bend in X, Y, and Z, um, but that would just make sense, so we don't do that. What you can do, though, is you can rotate the Bend modifier and get the effect that you want. So let's do this. Let's just take it and put the uh, tap E for rotate. I'm going to hold down J just so I can snap and I'm going to rotate this down. And let's see which direction. You probably have one more 90 degree direction to change, but let's see what we get. Yeah. 
So we can do something like this, which is not what we want. What we want is we want this, but to rotate back in that direction. So what we need to do is one more 90 degree rotation. So I'm going to hold down J and rotate this 90 degrees. Okay. So if you look at it now, we're starting to get into the direction of your ball. And if we go to the top view and we center this up, we can get a real good look. So let's see what we want to do. We've got the curvature highlighted. And if I middle mouse click here in the view, I can actually just eyeball this and do this pretty close. Maybe something like that. Looks like it's pretty good. Now let's go back to the perspective view. And we've got that. Okay. Now it may not be enough. Maybe you want it a little bit more. Um, you can tweak this just a little bit if you like. So maybe you want it just a little bit tighter. Maybe not. Um, you can actually change the effect of it by moving the bend modifier a little bit. So if you want to do something, you could actually do this. You could expand it just a little bit. Maybe this tucks it in just nicely just a little bit more, maybe something like that. So you can do that. Uh, the next thing you may want to do, and you got to be careful because it'll introduce distortion, but it may work to your advantage, is you could add a second bend modifier to this. So you mentioned before a you were getting a vertical bend. Well, that might work to your advantage in this case. So here's a vertical bend. It's probably not lined up right, but we can rotate it, and it's easy enough to figure out what is working, what's not. Okay, so here's a little bit of a bend. Say give it like 10 degrees, something like that. Clearly not working now, it seems to be rotating in this direction. But all we have to do is tap the rotate, and it looks like 90 degrees on this axis. If I hold down J, and just let that snap, and I'm looking at the bottom of the left-hand corner of the screen so I can see exactly how much I'm rotating. All right, and that just sort of bends the text the top, the vertical part of the text, a little bit more onto the surface of your sphere. All right, so now I have two bend modifiers on that. So in this case, you could have this, and we could just, you know, stick a blend on this. And I, if you're happy with the bends, you can just hit delete history, and all this stuff will go away, and then you basically just have straight up geometry. Um, but if you want, for some reason, um, to continue control, like you might want to do something like you, if it's a client project or something, you might show them this and they go, hey, well, you know, I, I, I like what you're thinking here with this bevel thing, um, but we don't really want that. So, you know, you can go back into a cleaner bevel. So you might just say, well, let's just do straight, uh, straight in and straight out. So you might do something like that with it and get rid of that detail. As soon as you delete history, you lose that ability to do that. All right. So you might do something like that, or maybe you want to just make some other change. Um, but there you go. That should um, hopefully do what you want. Uh, once, like I said, you have the bends uh, uh, where you want them, um, be careful of moving your text or be careful of moving the bends. Um, you'll notice that they're purple. Okay. What happens is as you move these, it will affect your geometry. And if you move the word, it will actually deform as well. So if you get it to where you want, you may want to save a version of the file uh, with all the options available, um, but then once you nail it, just hit delete history, and then you've just got your geometry and it's not gonna deform and it'll sit there and not screw you up, all right? Hopefully that was helpful. All right, take care.